Disc brakes, as good as they are, they do still wear out over time. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to measure and assess the condition of your disc brake rotors. Best bit is, well, it's actually super easy. This method is gonna work for any disc brake rotor, irrespective of brand, manufacturer, size. So you are gonna need one fairly basic tool for the job. You've got a few different options here. You've got vernier calipers, such as these, or you could use a micrometer, such as this. Unfortunately, a tape measure isn't gonna cut it for this job. However, there is a third option, which is significantly cheaper. And that is a plastic digital thickness gauge. And this is able to measure down to a hundredth of a millimeter and is more than accurate enough for the job. And I actually picked this up online for less than around 10 pounds. So it's quite a good little tool to have. So what we're aiming to measure here is the rotor's thickness, because over time, the material will gradually start to wear away. To do that, we can use our thickness gauge. Simply need to turn it on, zero it, and then take a measurement at a few different points around the braking surface of the disc brake rotor. I can look at those measurements, and the reason we're taking a measurement at a few different locations is to make sure there aren't any areas which have worn or been damaged more than others. Now, different disc brake rotors will have a different minimum thickness that they're able to use until once their sort of service and usable life is completely gone. Shimano rotors, we're looking at 1.5 millimeters. SRAM rotors, 1.55 millimeters. And Campagnolo rotors, 1.65 millimeters. Well, there are, of course, lots of different brands of rotor out there. So if yours differ to those, it will usually be stamped onto the side of the rotor what the minimum thickness is, and if you still can't see it, just look online at the manufacturer's website and you should have a guide to help you out. So having measured your rotor thickness, if you've found it's below what the minimum number is, unfortunately, you're gonna to have to replace it. However, even if the rotor isn't below its minimum thickness, if it's got deep score marks or any discoloration on it from overheating, that's a sign that you're also gonna to need to replace the rotor. Here's one with uh, heat damage and scoring marks I found from GMBM. It looks like it's had a pretty tough life, this. So we can see if we look around on the braking surface of the rotor, there are some discoloration marks, and that is from where the rotor has overheated. There's also some score lines all the way around the surface. So in this instance, even though it's got enough life left in terms of the thickness of it, you'd probably want to look to replace it. Now, it's also good practice when you're replacing a disc brake rotor to also replace the pads at the same time. And it's not crucial, but I find that it does mean the system beds in together and works best and will make the whole system last a little bit longer. So if the condition of your rotors look to be okay, but you are finding that brake performance has deteriorated and you wish that your brakes worked how they did when they were new, I do have a video on the GCN Tech channel where I explain how to revive and refresh your disc brake pads and rotors. And I have a link to that in the description down below. So even if the parts aren't worn out, you should hopefully be able to improve their performance by following that little video. Now, if you do need to replace your rotors, thankfully, it's a very simple job. The best thing to do is to get exactly the same as what's installed onto your bike, and it'll be a super simple process. So there you go, that's how to check your disc brake rotors to make sure they're not worn out. It's a check that I would probably do every year or so, perhaps after a tough winter conditions of riding. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanna see more bike tech videos, just like this one, or see all the latest bike tech that's out there, subscribe to GCN Tech and um, turn on your notifications so you never miss out on a future video. Right, see you later.